Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some A-level further maths topics and today we are going to be talking about proof by induction. So we're moving on from a complex number theory and we'll be revisiting that at a future date with some more um, sort of theory about it. But for the time being we're going to uh, be talking about proof by induction and this is perhaps um, one of the subjects, that, well, well topics that was the most intense uh, on the old uh, edXL. AS level course uh, FP1 and uh, not a lot of people get it it's going to be a pretty long video so you might want to take regular breaks uh, make notes or whatever because it is going to be very very intense and I'd like to stress again I'm not a qualified teacher so this could go completely over your head but we'll try our best it's a pretty long video so um, hopefully you don't mind too much but the learning objective today is to understand how to prove a sequence works for every possible number so it's not necessarily just a sequence it could be a number system or whatever um, but here we go let's get into things so proof in mathematics is a very tough and confusing business that's because we have to prove that works for every possible number on this planet and that just takes forever you could say that's easier to prove something doesn't work because we'll only need to find one case of it not working. So we need to find a way where we can prove something works without actually sitting there and testing it for every single number uh, possible because that would just be stupid. This is where a beautiful but very very difficult piece of maths comes into play known as proof by mathematical induction and uh, you can research it online it's, it's very very famous bit of maths and I believe it's uh, first year uni obviously I haven't been there yet so uh, I, I can't really say that but I believe it is uh, it works on the basis that if something works for any given number which is usually k just a generic number and then it works for the next generic number k plus 1 then it must work for any number because if you think about it k and k plus 1 are any generic number in this world which counts for every number in this world so you've proved it so let's try an example and we're going to go very slow and try and be very clear and concise about this. So prove the following. Now this might be a notation that you're not familiar with so um, the sigma which is this E looking thing is the sum of so we'll say the sum of all of the numbers from 1 to any stopping point so if that was a 5 up top it would be 1 to 5 the sum of the numbers from 1 to 5 which would be 1 add 2 add 3 add 4 add 5 so it's the sum of the numbers from 1 to any given stopping point and you pick that stopping point and that's when it's R so R is just a natural number so it's 1 add 2 add 3 add 4 add 5 but if it was R squared it would be 1 add 4 add 9 add 16 add 25 so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense and instead of um, adding them all up to infinity we could just do a half of your stopping point and one added on to your stopping point and that'll get you the same answer so that's what we're trying to prove essentially in this lesson so here we go the left hand side LHS in layman's terms means to sum up the numbers from one to any stopping point so that's what I've just been talking about the right hand side or the RHS in layman's terms suggests that you don't have to sit there and do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to plus n you can just do it by multiplying n and n plus 1 and then halving your answer so that, that, that's a very powerful piece of maths there so prove the following there we go step 1 we always check it works for 1 because it would just be futile if it didn't work for 1 um, because you know we'd just be doing work for nothing so the way we always start these proofs is by putting a 1 through and seeing if it works so let n equal 1 uh, so the LHS would just be 1 because the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 1 is just 1 and on the right hand side it would be a half times 1 times 2 which is a half of 2 which is 1 so both sides are equal therefore it works for 1 but that's not a proof that could have just been a fluke and remember we need to prove it for every number k and the next number k plus one so step two let the kth statement be true now this is just part of the script to induction um, if it works for one we can assume it works for k numbers 
So we literally write that uh, that as a statement and rewrite the uh, right hand side with k's instead of n's. So let the kth statement be true. The sum from 1 to k equals a half of k uh, dot k plus 1. This is known as the inductive hypothesis. Step 3. Set yourself a target. So if you think about it, this is uh, the sum of the numbers to n. And we want to prove that works to n plus 1. So we simply replace those n's with k plus 1's. So there we go. It's difficult to know when you actually write with induction, so we set ourselves a target. So we rewrite the k kth statement, but with k plus 1's instead. Now this is not the answer, this is just something to work towards. Um, and you must show your method in an exam of how you actually get to the answer. But you might want to put it in a little box at the top right corner. So the target here, replace the k's with k plus 1's and we end up with that. So we know that if we get that, we've done it right. So there we go, we've got a little target in the, the top right corner. So step 4 is to look at the k plus 1's term. So this is the really, really tricky part of induction. It's been sort of gettable to start with and just remember practice makes perfect certainly with induction because you know you don't get it your first few examples and then once you try a few yourself you start realizing the patterns uh, so think about for example the sixth term of this sequence uh, that would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 but isn't that just the same as the fifth term, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, and adding another 6? So this tells us that the k plus 1th term is the same as the kth term plus k plus 1 put through the sequence. So this leads us to a kth statement, which is that, remember, plus a k plus 1. So we let everything up to k be our kth statement because obviously that's everything up to k. Uh, so because of a hypothesis we can drop in with kth statement and there it is there. But remember we have to add on the k plus 1 like that because that is the k plus 1th term. Do not expand at this point and look for common ground. So what do I see there? By the way, we always keep fractions to the front, no matter what. So what do I see common between these? I see a k plus 1 and I see a k plus 1. So I hike that out at the front and bring that there. So it's a half of k plus 1 and then k plus 2. You wonder where this 2 came from. Well, we've got k left over from here. And we have to times the half k plus 1 by, well, because we'll be just left with 1 here, so how we're going to recreate k plus 1 if we've got a half k plus 1 on the outside? Well, we just put a dummy 2 in there, and because uh, the 2s will cancel out, and it'll just become k plus 1, k plus 1. So, do not expand, look for common ground, that's what we've done. And we take any fractions and common brackets out at the front, and put any leftovers and dummies inside the square bracket, like that. And what do you know? What does that look like? That little thing at the bottom there is exactly the same as our target up here. So we've done it. We've met our target. And now the final bit is you tell the world that you've done it. At a high level we're expected to write a little bit about what we've just achieved. So for inductions we simply say the following. If it's true for n equals k then it's true for n equals k plus 1 and therefore via mathematical induction it is true for n is a member of any of the positive real numbers so uh, from 1 to infinity positive numbers it will work well integers and that is uh, your first induction proof done so a little recap of the steps you might want to make a note of this uh, we can prove a sequence or system works for any number in five clear steps. So check it works for one. Let the case be true. Set yourself a target. Look at the k plus one term. Tell the world you've done it. So there are your five steps. Very, very clear. And once you've done four or five of these, you get a lot more confident. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's not 
too scary once you've done a few. So, we'll do another example just to try and secure that knowledge. We'll do a little bit more quickly though. So prove the following number system. And that looks a hell of a lot scarier than the first one, but I promise you it's not too bad. So that is the sum of the numbers from 1 to n of 1 over r, r plus 1, equals n over n plus 1. So he's saying you don't have to do all the work, add all the numbers from 1 to, to n, put through that sequence. You can just tell us your stopping point and divide it by 1 more than your stopping point, and you'll get the same answer. So step one, check it works for one. So let n equal one, and on the left hand side we've got one over one times two, which equals a half. And on the right hand side we've got one over one plus one, which is one over two. So it works for n equals one. Step two, let the kth be true, so we replace n's with k's, and we end up with that. Uh, step three, set yourself a target, so remember, that is the kth statement with k plus 1's in there instead. So our target sits up top on the right, like that. We've simply just replaced this little bit here with k plus 1's. So that's where that comes from. But remember, that is, well that is the answer, but that's not going to get you the marks in the exam. So step 4, look at the k plus 1's term. Now that is the addition of everything up to k and then k plus 1 stuck through the little formula so isn't that just the same as putting the kth statement in there which is this and then adding k plus 1 put through that so we just replace any r with a k plus 1 and hike it on the end there and then what we look for is common ground we do not expand at all so we bring out a factor of 1 over k plus 1 and we are just left with k and 1 over k plus 2. So we're left with that. And now we want to put this under a common denominator. So we times the k by k plus 2 and stick it all over k plus 2. Like that. And then at this point we expand. And we get that. And now I'm thinking that that factorises. So we end up with that. And now we see 1k plus 1 on the top and 1k plus 1 on the bottom and they can cancel. And that 1 is just 1 times this fella. So what we're left with is simply just k plus 1 over k plus 2. And what do you know? That is our target. So we have met our target. And now we're going to tell the world we've done it. So if it's true for n equals k then it's true for n equals k plus 1. And therefore, via induction, it is true for all the positive integers of this world. Real integers. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. So, very, very intense lesson there. So you might want to re-watch it. There is more lessons on induction coming up, but different types of induction. Go on the internet, find loads of examples of these. There is plenty of them out there. And if you're really struggling, go on to Edexcel, FP1, Past Papers, and there's always an induction on there. So go check it out. I hope you found it helpful. Please leave a like down below if you did. Uh, it'll obviously let me know that these lessons are of a, uh, of a good quality. Uh, let, leave your feedback down below if you have any questions about it. Um, or if you want us to do another lesson in the future and let us know and hopefully you found it helpful and thanks for watching and yeah goodbye